Astronomers around the world are closely tracking a newly discovered comet that has sparked speculation its origins may be connected to extraterrestrial life. The 3I Atlas comet was discovered in July of this year when it was observed by a telescope in Chile. A few of the comet's characteristics, such as its chemical composition, for example, are considered unusual by some scientists. 3 Atlas is only the third interstellar object known to have entered our solar system. Astronomers say the comet's trajectory poses no threat to us here on Earth. Let's dig in deeper in this interstellar mystery and bring in science journalist Robin George Andrews. Robin, this object really has captured the imagination of Earthlings. In your opinion, is 3A Atlas a comet or an alien spacecraft? It's like screamingly, patently, obviously not an alien spacecraft. I hate to like bum people out. You know, we all kind of anxiously wait the day that, you know, we discover we're not alone in the universe. But this is just, it's definitely a comet. It's very, very cool. It's from another star system, but like it's a comet. Yeah. But Harvard astrophysicist A.V. Loeb has pointed out Atlas has some unusual characteristics that could suggest the presence of alien technology. So he's not as sure as you are. Can you walk us through the aspects that he has pointed out? Yeah, so um, I'd just point out that his opinion is incredibly fringe um, and there's no real evidence to support it. So, so some of the things that's been suggested are that, um, you know, it's, it's on a trajectory that takes it like through, uh, like near Mars and, and then it hides behind the sun and then it pops out the other side. Um, just to paraphrase um, something that astronomer said to me once, uh, a different astronomer, is that if it is an alien spaceship, it's doing a really good job disguising itself as a, no a normal comet in the <laughs> sense that it's clearly a comet. It has like a coma, this envelope of gases that, that like is very typical for comets. It has a tail. Uh, one of the things that was pointed out, I was like, oh, maybe it's a thruster from a rocket, uh, was because as it approached the sun, its tail was pointed towards the sun, but that's a pretty ordinary feature. Tails don't always point away from uh, the sun when the material gets like blown away. If there's big bits of the comet falling off, um, as often happens, it will it can fall towards the sun. So um, that's pretty normal. This idea that it's hiding behind the sun is kind of hilarious because we could see it before and after. So unless they're playing peekaboo with Earth, it's just what a comet does. So. Um, and there's something that's come up is it has iron and nickel in it. Now we think of comets as like icy. Uh, kind of balls, like snowballs, which they are, but they also have iron and nickel in them because they also have rocks in them which have iron and nickel. So, like, there's no signals coming from it that that uh, you know uh, that, that you know exhibit any form of sort of technological uh, evidence. Um, it's clearly made of ice. It's it's uh, yeah, it's a comet from like a very 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 distant part of our galaxy, but it's still a comet. And that distance, that is part of what has experts so excited about Atlas, isn't it? Yeah, so, you know, we have loads of comets in our own solar system, this sort of planetary neighbourhood where our species is kind of growing up in. And they, they, they're already kind of weird in themselves. Um, and uh, we've only known three comet-like objects to come from another, you know, star. And this is the third one. Um, and yeah, it's it's come from an incredible distance away. No one knows exactly where it's come from, um, but people think it's, you know, it's one of the oldest objects like in the solar system, just from like the kind of region of the Milky Way it might have come from. But uh, yeah, it's not here for a long time, but it's here for a good time, I guess. <laughs> Yet the scientists believe that Atlas is at least 7 billion years old, if I'm not mistaken. That is much older than our solar system. It could be the oldest comet ever observed, which is in and of itself mind-boggling. Has it been flying around the universe for all those years? Yeah, I mean, it's it's not clear, like, if it was originally part of, um, you know, like an icy moon or a planet that got destroyed, maybe. Or if it was, you know, the leftovers from the formation of, like, you know, planets. That, that, and it never really coalesced with them, so it just got, like, chucked out the... The system but yeah it could have been it could have been like flying around the the cosmos for like seven billion years which is you know uh several billion years older than even our own sun has existed for so it's it's like a time capsule from from another star which is pretty amazing when you think about it yeah and let's get back to the basics for a second before we continue what exactly is a comet especially when you compare it to you know an asteroid or a meteorite 
So comets and asteroids are both like the leftovers from planetary formation. Um, they're like the building blocks that don't go into like building anything. Or if they did, they got like smashed apart and thrown away. Um, asteroids are the more rocky, metally kind of things. Uh, and they hang out kind of closer to the star, whereas comets uh, are at the fringes of like a solar system, you know, where it's cold enough for ices to kind of freeze up. And not just water ice, but you can have like carbon dioxide ice. It's quite common that, you know, freezes out at the end. And, and 3 i Atlas is is like really rich in carbon dioxide ice, um, which makes it like a bit weird, but yeah, it's still a comet. And Atlas is traveling at an incredible speed what is it fueled by? How does the fuel also not run out over such a long period of time? Seven billion years is what we're talking about here. Yeah, so the fuel is is pretty much just gravity, actually. it's it, it just shows you how violently it was like ejected from the star system that it that, that it was in. Um like comets, um comets travel at incredible speeds in our own solar system. They travel like, you know, they could travel like across like the United States in like half a second kind of thing. They travel incredibly fast. And it's just because most of the of the mass of like a of a star system comes from the star. And if you chuck something around that, it just gets a huge boost as it's going towards it and then as it comes out, out the other side. I mean, Earth travels incredibly fast around the 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 sun as well. We just don't feel it because we, we live here and we've evolved to get kind of get used to it. Um, but yeah, comets are just known for traveling really fast because they just slingshot around stars. So if you throw one out of a star system, it's going to have to be traveling incredibly fast to uh, you know to to make it from one star to another. So it's just it's just gravity, funnily enough. So and gravity doesn't run out if the stars are still there. So yeah. How do you think Atlas is likely to add to our understanding of interstellar phenomena? Well, because. When you have telescopes like the James Webb Space Telescope, for example, that kind of like, you know, ha sort of looks at stars and planets very far from us, um, you kind of get an idea, like you get hints of what these things are made of. You get to see like what my uh, atmospheres these planets might have, uh, how big they are, what they might be made of, you know, what the stars might be like burning up. But this is actually like a bit of material from uh, you know, a star system, you know, very, very far away that we'll ne maybe never get to see. So it's the difference between, I don't know, taking a photograph of something that's really far away and actually going there and like digging up some of the like archaeological ruins of it. So it's like doing archaeology for a, a completely different, like a planet that doesn't exist anymore. So it's sort of, you know, it's it's galactic Indiana Jones stuff, I'd say. So it's very cool. So this comment we're talking about is only the third known object to visit from outside our solar system, which is why it's called 3i, because it's the third. Do you expect a lot more to be detected in the coming years? Yeah, so there's this incredible observatory that like um, is going to go fully operational uh, late this year, early next year. Um, and it's called the Vera uh, C. Rubin Observatory on a mountaintop in Chile. And it's basically, um, it has a very wide kind of field of view. So it can see a lot of the night sky all at once. And it can see really, really faint starlight because it, it, it's just very sensitive to that kind of thing. Um, it's the most advanced like telescope ever built. And it will document everything that glimmers and shimmers in the night sky. Um, it will be able to see things as far out as like Pluto, uh, which also means that it will be able to see uh, interstellar objects coming into our solar system. Now they probably come in like, not all the time, but fairly frequently. We're just not being able to spot them. But with this like incredible observatory, uh, not only will scientists be able to see them coming in a lot more frequently, but then they can get things like the James Webb Space Telescope to like zoom in on them um, to kind of get a better look. So not only will we see, you know, um, you know, a handful more, maybe every single year um, from next year, but we'll actually be able to see them for a lot longer as they come in, study them up close, and just really get an idea of what other planets far from home are like. Or spacecraft coming into our solar system. Who knows? That was science journalist yeah. Robin George Andrews. Thank you so much for your time. Fascinating stuff. Thanks for having me.